EMB Sports Radio. All right, everybody, it's Marky e. Bilson with the second hour. Jay Santos will join me at 1.30, and we'll talk a little bit about uh, Steve Forbes, uh, I guess, having a problem with my line of questioning. Well, that sort of shows you've made it as a journalist. It also shows that I, Marky e. Bilson, here on Tri-City Sports Now. Yeah, I, I, I've been told this by my peers. Nobody else in this market has as much guts as I do. And if you want to know what it is, I asked about Maladen Armas if he had been played at the morning press conference today over at ETSU if Maladen Armas had played had been played with a concussion at the end of the SOCON tournament. Because he was out on the court, and then 10 days later, they say, oh, concussion protocol. And on this show, Jason Shea said he that uh, both Rodriguez and Armas, concussion protocol, what was the situation? Well, there, you know, uh, he said the injuries were suffered during the game. What you know, it almost might have been forgivable, like, okay, we didn't know, or something like this, but it's the way that ETSU handled it afterwards. Closing down practice. On the notes of the game, both Rodriguez and Armas were listed in the starting lineup. And then just for the last minute, oh, yeah, they're out, concussion protocol. Ten days later. Now, I understand concussion protocol is what Forbes uh, said during the press conference, uh, was, hey, you've got ten days in concussion protocol. And I, okay, I get it. But the thing is, you say, don't ask me a question. That's not his call to say. And Forbes is probably always going to be a more popular man than I, but that doesn't mean anything. Uh, the situation is such that, yes, I mean, in my thing, you got to ask the question. And I'm going to try to protect the player more than. stayed afterwards, I got to ask some questions about what went on there. Got so defensive about it makes me wonder if, yes, this was the reason why Armas transferred. Think about it. You know, and you can say all your... And he also says afterwards, I talked to Armas, he was cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. That was his actual line. Then, what am I supposed to... Was he not cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs on the court? You tell me. Try City. So, uh, the boys basketball coach at his high school. Sander, of course, hires Steve Forbes. I was saying, in some ways, you know, going to Tennessee instead of, you know, there's some ties here local with this recruit of the... Anyway, uh, the high school coach says of the new vault, it hasn't been made official, but come on. Under what, I guess, you know, Jerome Rodriguez, the locals may say, look at him, he came back, but Rodriguez isn't going to be a first-round draft choice in the NBA. Come on. And that's where Williams is projected, and he's going to go to the NBA. Come on. So that means that the Vols will be real thin in the post. And this is a player that needs to come through sooner than later. Uh, he came from the United States to Finland a couple of years ago, broke a bone in his leg that cost him most of his junior year in high school. It was a freak injury, it's been called. And according to 24-7, uh, Preet, the high school coach, says that from the time that I got him to the time that he's leaving now, I haven't seen a kid develop this quickly, this fast. Maybe that speaks well of his ability to uh, perform in the SEC next year for the Vols. You know, um, we've talked about this. Right now, you've got DJ Burns, John Fulkerson from Kingsport, and Zach Kent. And that isn't exactly a satisfying post for the Vols next year. They're going to need someone. Now, if you look at recruiting rankings... Robinson Kamhala is three stars. Schofield was two. That's why I don't put a lot of stock in recruiting rankings. Uh, let's see here. His high school coach says it's your natural one is to say a Ben Simmons type, 
but he thinks that Robinson Kimhawa can shoot the ball better. Okay, that sounds a little bit like the high school coach laying it on, but still. Uh, his father, the Robinson Kimhawa, as I use the style of Myron Cope to talk, you know, the Maria True is in the next studio recording the Irwin Early Bird, that sort of thing. Uh, played basketball in Europe. Uh, the family was unfamiliar with the college basketball uh, commitment. He took a, a visit to April and April uh, in on April Fool's Day to Pitt, and then to Illinois on April twelfth. And around forty eight hours after his visit to Tennessee is over, he announced his commitment to play for the Vols on social media. So that's a big get. Now, the other big get for the Vols: what will make or break their season? And it comes down to, in my opinion. Uh, if they can get the big man coming out of, if he does come out of Virginia Tech, that being Kerry Blakeshear. You get Blakeshear and you get the finished product, then the Vols could have a productive, you know, forward, center, that sort of thing. I'm still waiting to hear on Blakeshear. Anything been heard, I can do, I guess, a, a search or so about that, but I'm still waiting to hear on Blakeshear. I haven't heard, you know, unless it's happened very recently and all this. Of course, the other guy, Jalen Cohn, who is... I thought of the Presidential Medal of Freedom when it was given to Ernie Banks a couple of years ago by Barack Obama, and I said, that's wonderful. That's somebody that deserves it. That's an athlete. I mean, Ernie Banks, you know, I mean, yeah, that's the sort of athlete you'd give the Presidential Medal of Freedom to. Now, Woods, as great as Banks was, 512 home runs, Mr. Cub... Yeah, Woods on the golf course probably exceeds what Ernie Banks was as a baseball player. But certainly not as an ambassador to his sport, in my opinion, based on Nike. Banks was... And so, you had in Tiger Woods getting the Presidential Medal of Freedom. Perhaps we shouldn't really look at, hey, he's the first one with his career still going on. Just won the Masters. You know, you can see that. He's not getting the Medal of Freedom for character. We'll give you that. He's getting it because he's good on his tee shots. All right. But still, you just wonder, of all the people you could have got, you know, Presidential Medal of Freedom, all the good character athletes... And it's Woods. You know, say what you will. I just, you know, hmm, that's sort of way that I kind of looked at it. You know, that sort of thing. Anyway, uh, when we come back, I am going to be finding the, uh, let's see here. We do have the ball game yesterday from the uh, Tigers-Angels, the first loss of the year for Daniel Norris. Of course, we've been talking about the no-hitter of... Mike Fires before in about 15 minutes. Jay Santos, voice of the ETSU Buccaneers, will join me. We'll talk all things ETSU. If Steve Forbes will ever talk to me again, uh, I hope so. <laughs> but uh, not his favorite person right now, evidently. But also how the basketball team will look to be. I think that uh, we can start talking about an NCAA tournament berth next year now. And also, uh, who's going to play quarterback for the Bucks? Tri-City Sports now. If you love strawberries.